Okay, so today I'm working on a little project. I want to document all of the hydrangeas that are growing here on the farm and then some other ones that I got at Christensen's Nursery. But I wanted to show you because they're so freaking beautiful right now and the fall garden is just looking so spectacular. So I thought it would be fun to give you a little bit of a tour and then I'm going to show you all the blooms next to each other so you can kind of get a sense of size and style. So don't judge because I did not stake these and of course they're falling over like they always do. Um, but I just wanted to give you a tour of the different types of PGs that we're growing. So the thing I love about PG hydrangeas, let's go look at limelight first. The great thing about them is you can't prune them wrong. You can be kind of a bad gardener and be kind of lazy and flaky and they still perform really, really well. So this is one of the first PGs that was like a new hybrid that was introduced through Proven Winners called Limelight. And it's this beautiful giant green. It starts out kind of a cream and then it ages to green. And then as the fall comes, it takes on these little like cranberry edges on the petals. This is like such a solid workhorse. It's a great variety for cut flowers. This is one that many flower farmers grow on their farms and you can see why. It's just fantastic. So this one, we have a huge hundred foot row of it from back in our days of doing tons and tons of grocery sales. And these guys always sold out every week. Everybody loved them. So this is a wonderful plant, very easy to grow. You kind of can't kill it or do anything wrong. So that's a winner. Now this is one called Pinky Winky and it's like a super dorky name, but it is so beautiful. I love this one. She's one of my favorites. So what I like so much about this one is that the blooms are very like triangular, like they're very pointy and spiky and they typically start out this beautiful kind of creamy color. And then as they age, they start turning pink from the base. And then eventually the whole thing is pink, but they just turned like the last week. They went from cream. Let me see if I can find one. They turned like, here we go. Well, it's not that cream, but you can see how the little florets there are more of that creamy color. That's how the whole thing was. And then they eventually went to this beautiful, kind of brilliant cranberry pink. So I really, I like Pinky Winky a lot. And you can see not many of them fall over. So it does, it doesn't flop under the weight of its own flowers. This is one called um, Quick Fire. And this one is fantastic in the landscape. It's super productive. Let's find the flower of it. Look how tall they get. And the thing that's so great about this one is that it has very loose florets. So you can see the wasps love it. Um, but you can see the big giant florets are kind of spaced out like this. So it starts out this beautiful cream, takes on a little bit of pink, and then as they age, they go to this really rich kind of dusty rose color. But these start blooming in July and they keep looking wonderful until frost. And then I just leave them on the plant all winter and they get covered in frost and snow and they're just a beautiful plant overall. So this one, I would say, if I could only pick one to keep for the landscape, this is the one I would do for that. So that's quick fire. Let's see. Now this monster, I love this one, but it's also a little bit ridiculous. This one is called Bobo and it has these big, huge blossoms that are so heavy that every year it just tips over under the weight of it. But I feel like it's an improvement over limelight for the like flower arranging quality, but it feels like they're almost like big puffy clouds of cotton candy. And they turn from this really pretty creamy color, then they get the green and then they go to pink. And then eventually they get really gorgeous cranberry. But this one, I mean, look at them. They're almost just like, not obscene, but kind of ridiculous and wonderful and beautiful. But you can see the weight of the flower takes them down. Let's just push our way through this. A great thing about hydrangeas is that the pollinators love them, especially wasps. Um, wasps will go crazy for them, but you gotta be careful when you're picking to look for wasps because they definitely, you can see this guy's just hanging along for the ride. And I've actually delivered flowers with wasps in them before to a florist, so I learned my lesson early on. Okay, and then this is the last one that we're, no, this is, we have a couple more, but this is one called Little Lamb. And it's a smaller plant, so it'll be great in the landscape. I kind of think you could grow this in a large pot. This is its full size. It's about three years old. The reason I love this one is because the blooms are crazy. So even if the flower gets large like this, the florets are so miniature, they're perfect for arranging with. So I love to use this one in, let me show you, like 
that's the perfect size for a bridal bouquet or a bridesmaid bouquet. So I love little lamb for wedding work. That's a favorite. So if I could only pick one for arranging with, this is the one I would actually grow. And then I've got two more out here. Okay, let's cut through the roses. So these guys are new. Uh, we planted them last year. Um, a variety called Firelight. So it's beautiful, these beautiful giant florets that are very pointy. They kind of look like butterflies to me. So it starts out this beautiful kind of cream, ages a little bit to green, but they quickly take on this really vivid um, cranberry color. So I'm pretty sure that's why the name is Firelight. So that one's beautiful. And then Mega Mindy. I, that's a terrible name, <laughs> poor Mindy. But she does have mega flowers and it is super beautiful. So it's hard to know how big this is gonna get, um, but some of the earlier flowers were gigantic. So this one, I really like it. You see how lacy they are? And you have some that are more aged and some that are new. And I just really like the way they kind of all dance together. So I'm excited to see what this one does in the long run. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so with PGs, when the thing I really like about them that makes them so easy to care for is you can't prune them wrong. You know, like with the big mop heads, like the blue ones, if you prune off, they bloom on old wood. So if you prune them too heavily, you won't get any flowers. Not with PGs. You can cut these puppies to the ground and they still bloom back. So that's the great thing about them. So the larger the flower that you want, the harder you prune them. So like with limelights, when we were growing them for cut flowers, I wanted huge gigantic blooms because that's what the florists want. So I would cut them down about this far from the ground in the winter and then get these big monster gorgeous flowers. But then if I'm using them for wedding work or arranging, I don't want flowers that big. So I would leave a little bit more on the plant and prune them about two feet above the ground. And then the flowers that they produce that next year are on the smaller side. So with PGs, pruning is super simple. You can cut them back, they'll bloom on new wood. They're low maintenance, easy to grow, very productive. They can actually handle some sun, which is nice. So here in Washington, we, you know, the sun isn't crazy hot and so we can grow them out in the open fields. But if you're somewhere that's hotter and has more powerful sun, you might want to tuck them into part shade, but it's nice that they actually can handle some sun. So I'm going to take you back into the studio and show you all the flowers next to each other so you can actually see what the flower size and the blooms look like compared to each other. Okay, so here is a bloom from each of the ones that I just showed you. So first we've got limelight and you can see it's a large flower with large florets. The flowers go from cream and then they age out to green. Super beautiful. Then we've got little lamb and you can see the florets are much smaller, more petite, definitely kind of has an old like sort of Victorian quality to it. This is my favorite for making bouquets with like handheld bouquets, especially weddings. Then you've got Bobo, this giant gal. She's kind of, kind of crazy, but I love like you can see the florets are kind of pointed, almost like they're pinched. But if you compare Bobo to little lamb, you can really see the difference. So this is, it's gorgeous in big arrangements, but it can be like, there's no way you could use that like in a bridal bouquet. Then we've got Pinky Winky and I selected a smaller flower here just so you could see how they start out cream and then they, they as they age, they turn pink and it comes all the way up from the bottom. And then eventually that whole like panicle will all turn pink. Then we've got quick fire. This is the great one for growing in the landscape. It's also a beautiful cut flower, but this is the first one to bloom. So flowers go from cream to pink and eventually like a dusty rose. Then we've got, let's go here, Mega Mindy, giant, beautiful florets, um, nice like kind of dancing quality. I love this one, really long stem so far. And then we've got firelight. And then this is like what the flowers look like when they're younger. And then as they age, they get more pink and then eventually super brilliant cranberry. So PG hydrangeas, like, I mean, I've grown a lot of different kinds of hydrangeas, but I would say these are the most foolproof, easy to grow. And then just overall, I just think they're the most beautiful. I just love these guys. So hopefully some of those might be ones you can plant in your garden. And then you're going to have to check with your local nursery. So there's a company called Proven Winners that has done a lot of like um, big breeding projects and a lot of these are now under the proven winners umbrella 
but you can find proven winners brands at like your local nursery, at Home Depot, at Lowe's, whatever. But I think the time to get plants is probably going to be in the spring um, because I was just at Christensen's nursery looking for more and they were pretty well sold out. So I'm guessing call your local nursery and ask for these, but I think that you'll probably buy them in the new year and then plant them in the spring.